This is Uncle William here and this is my own farm. And this farm is not owned by me, it's actually my dad who started it and it's known as Lian Hua Hang, means uh, in translated in English means United Chinese Company because my dad uh, is uh, from China and he fought the war with the Japanese and he was, is, uh, then he decided to leave the party which is the Kuomintang and came to Singapore and uh, he loved farming. No, actually he don't love farming. He sold away my grandfather's provision shop and he went to Japan even though he fought against them in the Second World War. But when he went to Japan the, with the idea that because a lot of people don't want to do business with Japanese because of the war, then but at that time Japan is very advanced so my dad went over and there are three things that uh, he discovered in Japan that is possible to do is first is toys, then comes to cars, and then uh, then farming la. But uh, he chose farming la. I wish he could choose the car la. So he chose farming is that when he visit the, the the university there, I think I think it's Tokyo University. Then uh, he visited the, the university and the receptionist or the secretary of the professor actually offered him a glass of milk. But this glass of milk is only half full. And he looked at the secretary and says, a young lady, you know, she's supposed to give me a full glass. Why are you giving me half a glass? Then the, the kind young lady says, oh, sir, if I give you the full glass, uh, then you cannot you have no appetite for lunch because this uh, half glass is quite filling. I said, are you sure? So he, he drink it and he says, oh, it's true. And at that time, after the war, uh, the first priority of uh, the people in, in, in that state is uh, food. So why? Well, then my father said, wow, this is a potential. So, and then the, the possibility is, is very big and the most important thing it is not very expensive to start so he learned all that he can learn in japan and came back to singapore and then in 1954 he started Lian Wahang and has been very very into this farming industry and he made a name for himself and i'm so so proud to be his son and very honored and and to be the son of a, a very very great man in the farming industry so this is my incubator the heart of the farm because uh, uh, if you ask me which one comes first the egg or the chick or the, the, the chicken I would say the egg comes first because uh, when it starts when my farm started we actually brought in the eggs so that uh, we incubate the eggs in this machine Okay, in nature, the parents sit on the eggs uh, to incubate but uh, because of the numbers and we do not want too many uh, hands to sit on eggs because if one hand uh, go on strike, the whole farm will, will totally stop produce, uh, operating. So this is the incubator that we actually put our incu uh, fertilized egg to incubate and as you can see, it's angled in, in a 45 degrees the reason why is this to simulate the turning. So as you turn the eggs, it's like turning the, the cake uh, in the oven so that they won't get burned. But of course, the, the fetus will not get burned. It's only thing is that the fetus will be uh, turned so that they have the, the freedom to develop in the eggs and not uh, position in one uh, position throughout because if that happens uh, the chick will hatch out handicap all right so that's why this we have this incubator and with the incubator we can produce a lot okay so the my farm the crow farm 
or Lian Wang Hang Farm, uh, we actually is better known as an integrated farm. That means, uh, what do you mean by integrated? Means that we have our parent stock. That means our, our breeding stock. Then we have our own hatchery, our incubation. Sorry, our own incubation, our own hatchery. Then we have our own brooder. Then we we'll grow the quail. Then we then separate it. the male will slaughter it for meat and the female we will uh, keep it in the farm to be our layers so this whole entire uh, network basically is what we know as an integrated farm so what is it inside here is actually to brood the little chicks so you can see here this is the little quail chicks and you see the light there's a light bulb inside there that is where the, they will produce the heat to brood the quail. So, and uh, we chose the, the carbon light bulb here is why? Because it produces heat at the same time it gives uh, lights so that the chicks are as and when they are hungry, they can eat. So in this manner, we can actually um, give maximum food to the food to the quail, the chicks so that they will, they will eat and they'll fatten and grow faster so this is the brooder so down here um, the cages here uh, these are my breeder stock meaning that uh, the parent stock here uh, so there will be 20 male to uh, 60 female one to three ratio where the male will actually mate with the female and once the female is being mated then the eggs that the quail the female quail lay will be fertilized fertilized means uh, when you incubate it it will hatch to a chick where alone a female quail without the male they will still lay eggs but the egg is unfertilized no matter how long you incubate the egg the egg will not hatch to a chick so all the supermarkets and markets the eggs that you buy back to eat those are unfertilized eggs so don't bother to incubate them they will never hatch out eggs at all. so this is the layer sheds here and uh, as you can see uh, we have evolved from the good old-fashioned uh, manual three tails uh, cages to uh, very very efficient and productive six tail uh, cages and the cages are all uh, the manual collections are all uh, conveyor belt that means automatic so the whole row of manure will be um, collected over here where we'll put the bin here and the manure will actually drop into the bin which we will actually uh, bring it to our compost shed for it to be composed so uh, in terms of cleanliness in terms of space efficiency um, this system really really give us the extra use of the space available here in our farm so instead of in the past we had three sheds producing eggs now we only need one shed okay so this is the packing area which uh, my man will actually uh, pack the eggs to be supplied to the supermarket so if you go to the supermarket if you see this packaging this is from my farm okay so time flies it's already been 27 years in this farm i remember when i come in this place is flat then that time I was probably about to the late 20s and uh, I actually built up this farm uh, from scratch all by myself so this cable that's overhanging here in fact this is really a rare sight now because now in Singapore overhanging cables are not allowed anymore we have to go underground so this overhanging cable is tells the stories also when uh, when we move in, I actually got to climb up there and lay the cable and pull the cable in to connect with the 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 the, the switch box inside the. So and being a farmer is that it's very very uh, satisfactory. So you got actually you got also have to be a jack of all trades. 
uh, but master and none. So, but I, I have finally mastered the quail farming. So, uh, at least I, I'm a master of quail now. So basically, it's, it's fun. Lah. Mm. So what I have in front of the camera here uh, are two young adults. And these two young adults basically on the right left side of my hand here, the left side, this is a female and the right side, this is the male. And it's so easily differentiate. You can differentiate the, the male to the female so, so sim si easily is uh, because these breeds are known as autosexing, means automatic, you can tell between the male and female. And my quail in the farm, these are known as Japanese quail or scientific name known as Japonica cottonic. So uh, the Japanese quail is a very good layer one day they'll lay one egg, five days they lay four days, one day rest. Lah, huh? So the Japanese quail is ideal for laying eggs. But if you want meat, uh, more meat, uh, then we will have to wait to buy a new farm and then uh, we will bring in the French cotton eggs, which is uh, a, a double size double in size compared to the Japanese quail and that is uh, very very ideal for as a broider. So this is also Japanese quail but in Japanese cotton nicks there are a uh, major of five different types. Uh, so one is the the just now I show you that that, that auto sexing uh, that is a um, uh, majority will look like that. Then next this will be the Grinch. Okay this is a Grinch uh, uh, Japanese quail and then this is the the white uh, British white okay so uh, then another one will be black and white that is a texto this Grinch and this white one very difficult to tell which is a male which is a female so the only way is you have to wait until they are adult then when they lay egg there's a female if they don't lay egg it's a male and also when they are mature uh, another telltale sign of the male is that the male will make a lot of noise like what you hear in the background okay see okay that's how a male sound like then if you want physical examination whether it's a male or female then you have to see the anus so if the anus is, is, is like this this most likely will be a female because the anus the opening is oopsie ah shucks they, they pull la, oh. yes i'm sorry only one hole so when the egg comes out the poo don't come out when the poo comes out the egg don't come out god is good eh? so um, the female will have wider hole so that the egg can come out whereas the male is very small uh, or, or it's not that wide la, oh. then uh so these two are pretty young let me go and get you a uh, more mature one where I want to show you that the male be, uh, above the anus there will be a big red lump now huh? hold on so this is the texto uh, black brown, dark brown so it's more like black like, huh? black and white so this is texto also Japanese quail and this confirms a male right now this is the, the more common uh, quail that we use in the farm because it's auto sexing so this confirms a male because it's all brown here no black dots and the big lump is you can see the anus slightly uh, this way is below slightly below the anus there will be this lump here and you see the lump uh, if you, you see this lump this is a male okay so I am Uncle William, I'm the super capo of the Lim Chu Kang countryside. So if you want to know more about farms, you want to visit the farms, you want workshops on farm because I been and been there, done it, all types of farming. So you want workshop for different types of farming, no problem. So you can reach me at my Facebook, Uncle Space William. Uh, follow my Facebook. Uh or you can email me at uncle.william at uncle.william.net or call me directly at 945-00752 so this is uncle william and i hope you enjoy yourself